come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits? The Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> Welcome back, friends and lovers, to the Saturday Night oh, Freak wow. Show oh, podcast. Oh, that's not that far ahead. Wow. Wow. So you can know each other first, before baby. the podcast. It's that kind of night, right. you guys. <laughs> Love airs. Every, lovers and losers. That's there you go, exactly. <laughs> there it is. Every Saturday night, the freak show happens, and you can find all of our past episodes. I think this is 181. We're, we're still on oh, our damn, way. Damn, good. Go to Magical Mark 200. it down. We're going to bake a cake at 200. <laughs> is that I what's totally going to happen? <laughs> you make, I need three cakes. I need a two, a zero, and a zero. I'm sorry. All so, right. So, uh, yeah, you can find them all on uh, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, and more. YouTube. And, and YouTube. <laughs> And uh, every week we watch a movie that's chosen round robin by one of the members of the Saturday Night Freak Show. Who are they? Allie. <laughs> Sean. Travis. And I'm Colin. And tonight, Travis picked the movie. And Travis, what do we watch? <laughs> I need to have this written down. We watch Guyver Dark Hero, which is basically Guyver 2. <laughs> The sequel to the 1991, I think 91. Did we look that up? 88. Look it up. 88? No. 88? Guyver? I, uh, I'm pretty sure. I think it's 90 or 91. I'm going to look it up. Anyway, this was 94. Yeah. Um, oh, And it was directed was it? by Steve Wang. Who no, Steve is Wang. Yeah, famous was... for basically um, credited with one guy. of the designers of the Predator costume. 91. Okay. 91. Yeah, that's not pretty sure. 91 to 94. Like, it has that like something. Ninja Turtles affected the first Guyver movie. Like you can tell. Yeah. Yeah. It was it's, like it was that period when Mark Hamill needed something to do. Like anything. Like Time <laughs> Runner. What do you got? Like I'll yeah. grow a mustache. <laughs> I don't care. Slipstream. <laughs> Anybody? Slipstream. Can I please have a mustache? Everybody <laughs> thinks of me as this twenty year old. Yeah. Just... All right. So, so well, well you can go of... back and listen to our original Guyver episode. Yeah, the Guyver. Caught up on on Guyver, but we'll do a little bit of a refresh for you. Where did the Guyver come from? Outer space, I guess. No, I mean I like some uh, kind of well, space armor. Oh, uh, the, <laughs> yeah. okay. The Giver is a manga from Japan. Japan, Nippon? Um, the land of the rising. Created sun. by, let me if I can get this right, Yoshiki Takaya. So it's probably like Yoshiki <laughs> Takaya right. or something Yoshiki. like that. So Takaya. If I'm saying, if I'm reading it like Yoshiki, is Yoshiki or something? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> no, that's uh, yeah. Uh, and um, it. You know, I had a good uh, shit. I want to say it might even still be running. I want to say it's one of the longest running uh, mangas in so Japan. So, is it? A, is it? Is the comic? Is, is it considered like a superhero comic? Because you have a guy in a suit. It's not with uh, special it's abilities. It's not necessarily superhero. They have like almost their own genre. Like, like Ultraman is an alien that crashed into a dude, killed the pilot. He's like, oh, shit, I killed this dude. I will merge with your body and we'll, you know. Yeah. So there's but does like, he make okay, him a superhero? Like, does he yeah, do, like... But, I mean, yeah, yeah, they're superheroes, but they're always having to deal with, like, merging with another life form. Or, <laughs> Constant or, or, merging. Or alien, or alien technology and, of course, the whole growing gigantic and, you know, like fighting <laughs> monsters and all that shit. <laughs> So there is, I can't, I'm not, guy. like, nerdy enough to know, like, oh, it's called, you know, I don't know the name of the genre oh, that no. is you the, do go uh, squat. the kind of the, I guess. <laughs> like the equivalent I mean, maybe, of kaiju for Exactly, giant kaiju movies. or hero or whatever the yeah. fuck. So it is kind of, that's where it's the, the, the inspiration springs from. Because, right. you know, the creator said, you know, oh, yeah, I watched... You know, Ultra 7 and this, that, and the other thing. A lot of stuff I haven't seen because, I mean, I mean, shit. It is kind of hard to watch some of these 70s, you know. But the reason uh, people are kind of inspired by these type of stories is because it's not about whether the hero can defeat. It's like, well, the hero is fucking awesome. He, of course, <laughs> he's going to defeat the monster. But it's about the internal struggle of the, of the character, right? Mm. Almost like what Marvel Comics was doing for... The I've comic been, book characters in I've the 60s saying like this great power and yeah how does this affect your life with your girlfriend right. with your family school like how does this really and i mean and uh guyver is really a perfect example because it's not really about a hero it's not about going out and saving the innocent the cartoon or the manga 
Was there a cartoon? Oh yeah, for sure. Like that's a Japanese? First, yeah, there's a okay. yeah, there's a. But anime. not here, like that. No, it, well, it was brought here. That's how I first aired it. here somewhere. I'm like not aired uh, here, okay. but you can find it. Yeah, okay, I got well, it. It's out there. There's two series now because there was another one like in '09, mm-hmm. you know, which expanded. Did, uh, did you watch the cartoon before? The I, Giver, I saw you... the first movie when I was probably like fucking I don't even know twelve or eleven. Okay. Yep. But then when I uh, I moved and I saw a blockbuster for the first time, imagine that people, you know, because well, I. <laughs> You know, I grew up in Germany, then moved to, like, Kansas, and then moved to Illinois. So, yeah, it was a while before I was like, Blockbuster! You know, they have commercials for these things. You know, I thought it was amazing. And it was, because that's when I was like, holy fuck, the Giver! There's like, well, that's, you know, I never heard of Japanese anime, per se. And then, you know, until I went to that Blockbuster, and then I was like, well, there, there's all the stickers about, like, adult, you know. And, you know, you can't view it. It's <laughs> like, oh, weird, yes, dude. Yeah. What's this about, right? Cartoons with warning labels. <laughs> well, not even warning labels. It's just like, I mean, there's going to be fucking gore. There's, I mean, yeah. even if there's going to be cursing, gore. Yeah, probably boobs or, or panties, at least. Jig, jiggling boobs, something, whatever <laughs> Japanese people get into. You know, the usual, the basics. You know, you know, the basic thing Japanese people like. Girls bending over in their panties or showing, you know, that type of <laughs> shit. So, yeah, I was like, holy shit, there's a goddamn cartoon of this thing? And that's, that's like, one of these pivotal moments I talk about how you're just like, you know, you're supposed to, like, grow out of things. You know, you're supposed to get older and grow <laughs> out of things. But, like, you know, you find things like Giver and Heavy Metal, you know, like, holy shit. No, cartoons are growing up with me, <laughs> you know, obviously. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, even nowadays I say, uh, you know, I always say that no child ever you know, made a cartoon. I mean, they're all adults working on this shit. So it's like, why, why shouldn't cartoons have more adult themes? And, and of course, Japan supplies this, uh, just cause they're, you know, their movie making uh, like abilities are not, <laughs> well, they're just movie making abilities aren't as good. So they'll make cart. Well, the cartoons are almost like ads for the comic books in a weird way. You know, there'll be a half an hour. Yeah. Cause their cartoons are always really short. I mean, even like their series or whatever, they make like, it ends like, up being 45 minutes when you put it all together or something like that. Even now, like the latest Giver uh, series from 08 is 26 episodes. And mm. it's like, it seems like, and that's the farthest I've ever been able to get in the series, you know, because I mean, um, Giver had, it's like, had some of its, you know, it's I don't know. It just didn't really catch on in America somehow. I mean, so, uh, enough to warrant a movie just because it was it was touted as one of those like you know the Giver, the new name and ultra violent hardcore you know gore and you know you were gonna get monsters and heroes and aliens and and uh, so when the first movie came out, uh. You know, I mean, it was had like a three million dollar budget, so you know they had and it had the star Jimmy power Walker of, yeah. in it and, and Mark and Hamill, Mark Hamill, and uh, you know who was the lead guy? Who was the guy in that? Do we remember? Was it the guy from? It wasn't the guy from the like Jim Cotta or something like that, right? What, what was I thinking? He was a blonde dude, right? He was just a blonde guy. Yeah, okay. I don't think he had. Yeah. Who ran and like a martial arts studio or something? No, he went to school. Oh, okay. Yeah, he. Yeah, it's a. Yeah, he. <laughs> but, uh, Sean Barker, um, basically finds the Giver unit that this evil government, uh, agency. Agency, I guess. Kronos. Right? It's not even a government. Agency. Yeah, it's just it's an a, evil it's corporation. A, it's a corporation. Yeah, yeah Kronos. Sorry. It's a corporation, Kronos. Um, they obviously, um, want the Giver <laughs> and, um, cause it's some sort of a, it's like a biomechanical, bio uh, like armor that somehow it finds this guy, Sean Barker and attaches to his soul or something. Uh, yeah, it, like somehow it sucks it's his, itself his inside his system. body. Yeah. And then it explodes his... outwards and covers him with armor. This biomechanical kind of HR Giger inspired i thought in some parts of this movie armor that covers him and he's got like the third glowing eye in his head that he can shoot lasers out of and control yeah. other stuff yeah and a weird cause... phallic thing on his helmet and it's he has... a cool like thin thing yeah it's awesome he gives him the kind of a <laughs> okay the a thin so thing got, we'll yeah. go with that <laughs> thin thing on that's a dick on his head it kind of looks like a dick on his head i'll say that's uh insight <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. I saw it as the fin thing because it's it's, it's complementing cool, the. He's got like these elbow swords. 
No, the right? elbow swords are cool. So he's got the that spike on his head and the spikes on his elbows, and so that kind of completes the, you know. Yeah, I figure that's like an an, that's like an antenna on <laughs> yeah. his head or something like that. Yeah. It's like an antenna. I don't know what it's for. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm just yep. saying it's an antenna. <laughs> well, in the first movie, he defeat. Oh, the, so the Zoonoids. Yeah, are Kronos these creatures shape shifting monsters. monsters. Everybody that works for Kronos is a monster, and. Uh, now where do they come? They come also from space. So well, no, it's 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 said that humans were created with the genes to become zoonoids, uh, right. and Kronos just found out how to turn that on again. Yeah, it's it's like a latent a latent uh, gene or something so like all that. All humans have this, all humans uh, were potential were made to become zoonoids, and this is where our legends of werewolves and vampires and. And stuff come yeah. from any shapeshifters come from this. Yeah, so Kronos. But they was able actually to turn, turn into on. these reptilian creatures, which is kind of weird. I was expecting, well, you know, the... the werewolves and all that. There'd be different a <laughs> variety. Of, the... But they're all basically <laughs> the Guyver like cartoons have more like furry. Reptilian. Like I think that's just because well, that's what Steve Wang is awesome at making. The, if you look the, at Predator, in the first one, they were more furry, weren't they? There was a few of them. There was there was the one girl. furry one. The girl was furry. And that's that's like, right, because I had issues with that. And that's like based off <laughs> furry of with a, boobs, uh, I, from what I remember. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice monster boobs. But she, yeah, she's based off of a, a creature from the comic book called Ramotis or something like that. Ramotis. Maybe hmm. I'm, I, I could be completely fucking that up. But anyway, yeah. So the cartoons have more a you know, but yeah, variety, I, I just think and these a guys. Monster gallery. Our uh, menagerie, monster menagerie, better at monster making menagerie. wizard skin, like maybe, <laughs> maybe, or maybe they just so, think like the hairy thing looks too like maybe it's too hard. Maybe it gets matted. Or, you gotta keep know. on <laughs> p- punching furs into the. Yeah, they'd be like, the, "Fuck right. that!" <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Phone latex God rubber hairs. <laughs> All right, so uh, set me straight on this, just so I know. Like our crew going into this, did Steve Wang? He didn't direct the first one. Uh, no, he, I, I don't know who the fuck did. Did he do makeup on that, or was that he Screaming did, Mad George? Did. Oh, yeah, wasn't that Screaming right. Mad George? Yeah, it was Screaming Mad George. Directed I think he the directed. first one? Yes. Screaming Mad yeah. George directed, yeah. and uh, Steve Wang did some of the makeups, but I know that, I mean, it was such a big shoot and a big budget that they had other people. That's they why, did. that's why they say, that's why um, the design is a more kind of like a, I don't know what you would call it, like a Hollywood movieized version of the Giver. Mm-hmm. Where in Giver Dark Hero, I mean, fuck, he almost looks right off the page. Like, you know, the turquoise color, because I, I think the, the, the reason for this, and the reason Steve Wang wanted to, in the sequel, make it look more like the original Giver is maybe they felt that people couldn't distinguish, well, what's the difference between a Zoonoid and a Giver? Because they made the Giver look kind of reptilian. He was greenish, wasn't he? Yeah, they made him kind of look whatever. It's like, instead of making sure that he looks like a machine or something separate than Mm. the reptilian-looking Zoonoids. So that's why, and in in this movie, they let Steve Wang have almost, like, complete Complete creative control, control because the first movie was made for $3 million. They made this for uh, 800000 are you serious? I don't see how that's yeah. possible. Well, Steve Wang makes monster suits. Like, you know, like so. I was saying earlier, they put that money in like the right spots for this movie. Yeah, because <laughs> if that's yeah. the case, it looks like it costs more than that. I mean, it still looks like it's sure. on a very hobbled budget. But right. There's still cellophane than, in certain areas yeah. and then pumping yeah, guts. Because I'm sure. Yeah, all but the, I would have thought like, it was more than 800000 All the, all, it all has to be in the cave and the yes. suits. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, Good call, well, Colin. Good that's call. What I'm saying that, that's what I'm saying. It's like the bad guys in this movie. Are, like, you could tell the bad guys are who's working for Kronos because he's wearing a black t shirt. You know, security. I mean, that's how, yeah, a security hat. You yeah. know, I mean, because all their money was going towards the spaceship thing and. Well, when they when they got to the well, maybe we should we should take a cool. Guy. Yeah, yeah, so the, uh, so Sean Barker. Baker, whatever his name is. Barker. Barker. I, yeah, I fucking can't stand it when you like you know like a, a Japanese character's name and then like you're talking about the American you're version. Like, Sean I want to be like Sho Fukamachi. Uh, but no, Sean Barker. <laughs> uh, who's now defeated, played by uh, David Hader this time around. David Hader, who 
He's the voice of Solid Snake from the Metal Gear. Yes, yes he is. Also wrote the very first X-Men movie that Brian Singer made Mm -hmm. and wrote the Watchmen script that ended up being adapted by Zack Snyder. Yeah, Yeah. that was the one that I remember Alan Moore, who took his name off of, you know, I didn't want to have anything to do with the movie. He's like, no. He actually said the the screenplay that he read they got the closest was the David Hater script. Yeah, dude. That was what they ended up doing. And this was one of my first, this is maybe why my love of this movie Move. I mean, I love the character Guyver, hands down, but... Sean Barker not so much. But just <laughs> David my... Hayter takes that internal struggle and puts it on his face. <laughs> he is a That's very, what happens. Well, should we say, well, dramatic guy. But just the idea of a nerd. I like... <laughs> fuck, when I heard, like, Mega Fox can draw, I was like, holy shit. I kinda, oh, damn. I kind of like her a little bit. Like, I, <laughs> when someone's a nerd and they're doing nerdy things, I can appreciate that. I'm like, that's fucking cool you know because who i i don't like it when people don't give a fuck about you know like fuck i'll be batman i don't give a shit you know like whatever right no you want them to yeah, like, i want them to those be things you find nerdy and everything like you want them to care about it you almost feel like, like oh. a kinship with the filmmakers in mm-hmm. a weird way mm-hmm. you know you're like yeah dude you thought it was so cool that they were gonna i mean especially for because i mean I, I read an interview with steve wang where he's like i didn't want to make you know like yeah we made the first guy ever and it was kind of a shadow of what the original guy were. And then they're like, hey, let's do the sequel for half a million. He's like, fuck no. <laughs> but then they're like, well, you can you do whatever you want. Control. Like, you can, he's like, yeah. well, this could be my one chance to show the American audience what I feel the Guyver comic is about and like the internal struggle of, of having like a basically being attached to a, uh, basically attached to a gun. In a weird basically, way, you know, yeah. you're basically attached to a weapon and what that does to your personal life. And um, basically attached to an elbow knife. That's <laughs> an yeah. elbow yeah. knife. Yeah. He's got well, mega smashers. <laughs> well, ends up, he ends up having to break up with the girl from the first movie. He does. Fisky. Yep. And that sets him on it. Well, I guess it's because he he it sets him on a very, uh, very Hulk TV show oh my yeah. God. Uh, montage <laughs> of, uh, hitchhiking, of hitchhiking across the country. Yes. It was very Hulk. Yeah, he has dreams and he's drawing like spaceships and, and Guyver looking <laughs> things. And then he watches like drawing copy. He's drawing. And he makes sure he like, he like his drawings drawings and he like he he videotapes hard copy (laughs) (laughs) inside expose he he must be looking for werewolves or something you get that idea right we kind of forget the fact that anytime there's a mention of anything it could be a zoonoid right yeah he's one step away from having that map with the red yarn connecting dots and everything but he hits record before like right when the show starts so like oh no he like records she says there's and something in Wisconsin or in Utah there's stories about a werewolf and he's like then he hits record. Yeah. Yeah, then he hits I thought he just like, oh shit, my story. show's on record. <laughs> yeah, and then he finds stories. out in that the episode that the 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 there's werewolf. A, there's a werewolf attacking an archaeological dig. Right, and they've got these cave paintings, and wouldn't you fucking know it? The cave paintings look just as primitive as the drawings that he makes what? every night in his sleep. I think that's a pretty good look. I like to think it's the first time he's ever watched that show. That's what I like. <laughs> like he just stumbled upon it. I like. I, I think that's a good. <laughs> But, uh, you know, because so many times people just have these dreams and then blah, blah, blah. And I think it's an interesting <laughs> it's way very to close connect. It's encounters, it, right? It's a, is it? Now, well, I mean, just well, that, just like, I, I feel like I'm news. called to this place. I see a story on the news and now I've got to go on a trip across the Right, country. that means I yeah, have to go okay, there. To, yeah. uh, to set this up even more, uh, the beginning of the movie, he, Guyver stops a... Guyver! Sh- what a drug cocaine. fucking yeah, yeah it's like what the deal. fuck that's oh. the one thing that's so out of character <laughs> to me I'm like the guy ever cares about crime in the city I've never seen well, that it compels me it like calls him he's like got like the bat signal built into his yeah. forehead doesn't basically. it set it up as I mean because that's it's where weird. it's like your superhero movie setup I mean like yeah. maybe yeah. the movie goes somewhere else from there but it does you but go into it and it's like this is the scene does. out of you know Batman, Batman. the yeah. guys are doing the yeah. deal it's a warehouse it's like Robocop fog and smoke yeah and then all of a sudden, then your superhero comes in, kicks everybody's ass, well, kills, everybody. kills, kills everybody, kills everybody, and there's blood flying out of you know people. And a you're cop like, gets shot. This is rated R. Twenty three times. 
Yeah. And he's shot 23 times. In slow motion. In slow motion. <laughs> yeah. In slow motion, because we cared. Yeah. He has a You're family. Right. right. No! Like, no! Security guard! <laughs> but yeah, no. so when he tells Misky, he's like, I don't kill, it kills. I'm like, I don't... I, yeah, I wasn't feeling I'm that. Trying She's to just like, understand. that's not how it works. It's, yeah. Yeah, you, it's like, it's so you. if you point a gun at somebody and kill them... You're a doing guy. it. <laughs> but maybe it's just saying, like, I have a gun. What am I going to do with it if I don't, like, you know? Yeah. It's like I can't not do anything with it or something like that. Maybe uh, that's what he's trying. I'm it's, compelled. It, 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 what I thought it was was it was trying to do the Spider-Man Venom thing where, like, ah, it's yes. a symbiont with me and it's in my mind. Right. And whenever it takes over, then it. It compels me to kill because yeah. it—that's yes. how it. it deals but it only with it takes violently. over if he calls it. Skyver. Well, he does, it's not about what he <laughs> says. He, that's just like it's for the audience, right? Him saying that. It's not like Shazam, where sa- oh, actually shit. saying Shazam <laughs> brings down the lightning and turns. Got to play that way, though. Well, yeah, it's does, because it's Guyver. Guyver. dramatic, right? You need someone to be like Guyver, yeah. or in the cartoon, he's like Guyver. You know, he's always like yelling, right? It and it's always like I can see the anime oh, right awesome. now. It's like ah, oh, dude, it rips lights up, are going behind dude, it. Dude, it rips up the pavement. <laughs> if you watch this in the cartoon, there's like a force field that like boom. First, it will take out everything around that. Oh, it's oh I can brilliant. see it. I can see the anime right it's now. It's fucking Why brilliant. Why didn't we watch the It cartoon? looks great. Well, I, I would, but we're like a movie podcast and not like a TV show. If it was up to me, we would watch 26 that we have to adhere to. No, there's a six episode one that we could edit into a two and a half hour movie. <laughs> but, so yeah, so he gets called, well, there's an archaeological dig going on at this, uh, in Utah, and they mm-hmm. they claim to see werewolves. Joke? That ain't no joke. My brother's dead, man. <laughs> that ain't no lie. That ain't no, no lie. lie. <laughs> I love that guy. Yeah. So the poor David Hater has to go sticking his thumb. David out. Hater and his face have to go. Like to Like we're Utah. already into a montage. <laughs> oh, like, oh, oh Jesus oh. Christ! And over the if they cut every montage in this movie down by like eh, twenty seconds. We could have saved. Oh the God, there's that one. Oh, oh we'll my probably God. get to that. Because I can, well, I can see that though. It's a, I mean, speaking is like you know people that try to write. You know when you're like writing and you like you find out you're like holy fuck I'm just like following this, you know my character like in his day to day. I need to edit this <laughs> yeah. and like <laughs> right. jump to more important things. Not like he gets in the car, he backs out of the driveway. <laughs> he does right. That. Yeah. No, yeah, but like, the the scene I was thinking of was that moment where I think they see the. They see, was it they see the alien ship in the in the cave and it cuts to like every single <laughs> oh, member yeah. has this music is every building and member. building and then it doesn't have anywhere to go it, so it like it comes back over. and then it starts building and building again <laughs> so it can fit in like eight people with their look of Spielbergian wonderment yeah because they're uh, looking at the Ooh, look what we discovered Sean Barker meets uh, Corey <sighs> forget her last name uh, Corey yeah. She's the <laughs> scientist girl who wears oh glasses. God. She's an archaeologist. She's a anymore. scientist. She lips. knows what it's like to... Yeah. <laughs> I need to know! I know what I it's know like, it's like to, need to need to know. know. Come to my top secret yeah. archaeologist. Because I'm a scientist. I Nobody need, else is allowed, but you can come. Yeah. 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 I'm a scientist. So know he what it's infiltrates like. the uh, the dig. So this was this was oh. the moment, though, that I was like... You know, this is my first time going through it. And they walk... So, so far, it's been like a travelogue movie. But when they get to this place and she takes them on the tour of this cave... I'm like, this is a pretty big cave. There's a lot of people in here. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, so this is your cast, and this is your set. This is where the money went right yeah. here yes. to this cave. So, yeah. yes, ladies and gentlemen, you're spending the rest of your movie <laughs> in a cave it's like and a, the surrounding woods. It's like yes. a Batman TV show. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, or like a 60, yeah. Yeah, they're like, we spent a lot of money on this bad cave. Yeah. We should shoot some more scenes here. I'd say that took me by surprise, though, because for, I w- after the first movie, which was a city set, you yeah, know, it was like urban. Gothic. Right. Well, not yeah. gothic, but, you know, like a Batman kind of, you know, steel or, you know, some super uh, yeah, city-based yeah. su- superhero story. Yeah. <laughs> this one's going to take place in a cave. That's because they shot that first thing. They're like, cut. How much well, did you spend using, on that? It was using the woods. Grand. You know, that way you can have your fight scenes in these kind of non-generic yeah. oh, right. spaces. Right. And you it's a lot cheaper, probably, with oh, permits. Oh, Jesus. It like, becomes... Did we, we didn't even get through the credits to see where it was filmed. 
It seems like probably Canada. in Utah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, maybe in Utah. Wherever the Power That's Rangers filmed, the they also do. filmed because this <laughs> feels like of pine trees. This is and forty-five mountains. minutes of Power Rangers movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I but, tell you, that's a compliment. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like that better it's be a compliment. compliment. God damn it. I just wanted a power sword to like well, what, slice wait, across what, and blow up a What monster. do you mean about it was a Power Rangers movie? Because it feels like, if you've ever watched the Power Rangers show, like the OG Power Rangers show that I grew up with on Fox, like in Saturday morning cartoons and whatnot, so it's, it's once they transform, once they morph into the Power Rangers and they're fighting the monster, it is a lot of, you know, uh, people in Guyver type costume. I mean, it's everybody in costume fighting a... Monster, and it, it pretty much looks exactly the same. Like the cutting yeah. is the same. When you get those shots of like the two monsters jumping over the mm -hmm. camera, and the camera follows them yes. over the cliff, like, like and a, the fight moves and everything, it is a Power yeah, Rangers. The episode. physicality of yes. both of both the, the heroes. Where they, where and, they talk with yeah. their arms. Yes, yes. yes. Like they drop yes. one of those martial arts. We must poses. go. Do it now, Zords, and yeah. all that shit. Like yeah. that's exactly yeah. what it is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that's I love that's, it, a, that's but a style, right? I mean, it the, is. the talking with your hands, that's just like a pantomime because, you know, your because character's the guy faces who's, are covered. Yeah, and the guy and who's David under Hayter there is like an, an Asian guy, right? <laughs> well, no, they we don't know that. The stunt it, it, his name wasn't It was like Asian. somebody, Hauk. Anthony yeah, Hauk? Anthony Hauk. 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 Yeah. Hauk. It sounded, Hauk. It sounded uh, Canadian to me. Yeah, maybe. Hauk. But he's definitely a ninja. Oh, he's, he's definitely see, a that's ninja. That's why I'm like, yeah, <laughs> fucking ninja fighting. <laughs> this is why I love this dude. Ninja fighting in costumes. Yeah, I guess, I mean, fucking if it is power. But it's not, I want to be like, well, it's power. It's just the genre of, of, of martial arts fighting in costumes. Are you making <laughs> an monsters. excuse for it, though? Is it no, I can show a, you a bloodier million, version of no, I can show Rangers. you, a, But I can show you yes. a million shows that are this. You, you can't just say Power Rangers. I can show you a no, million. Okay. I mean, you, and a, that's true. Because it's a I'm just genre going, yeah. from a different okay. country. I know. I just <laughs> have to know that part of the genre. Okay. Yes, yeah, you're right. familiar with Power Rangers. That's what I grew which up with. Power Rangers is, you know, a Japanese edited show. With a few Americans with, thrown in. The only American scenes are the, like, you're at the fucking. The whatever Max it's, the, or whatever the restaurant's the, yeah, called. Yeah, the restaurant. <laughs> the, the, the purple. Yeah, bit, I know. Whatever it's called. <laughs> yes. What, the gym or something. The dojo. It they're in it's the like dojo a, it's like a health again. bar fucking dojo. <laughs> we're talking about Power Rangers too much. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> but, but yeah, those are the only American scenes. So then when they cut to anything and fuck it with monsters and suits, I mean, that's why the directing looks the same. Because Steve Wang, Steve Wang is a. Uh, I don't. I don't want to say he's he. Would you say Taiwanese? Taiwan? <laughs> yeah, I think so. He's Taiwan. But he. I know he grew up in Taiwan, so that's where he grew up watching like Ultraman and blah. blah. So I'm sure. I mean, shit. This is like a, what the second movie he directed. I think it's only this. I mean, this is it. The last movie. He, he made a movie called Kung Fu Rascals and this. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it killed his. I made Kung Fu Rascals. Career. He made so, his work. But yeah, he was like, he... all I wanted to do was make a Guyver well, movie, and did I did. What, yeah, he's like, I'm done. He did what like every director does: <laughs> is they list. mimic done. what they've seen and they try to like you know well, yeah. a little bit. But that's where it actually. I thought like this time because you know I mean if I remember my recollection of the original Guyver movie, I wasn't all that thrilled with it but this mm -hmm. one like w because i mean what you're interested in i guess is the guyver is gonna fight some fucking monsters yeah he's gonna fight some <laughs> and monsters so it's like i don't know within like the first 20 minutes he's in the woods and there's a this reptilian creature appears and i'm sitting there going like i remember thinking the monsters in the first one were pretty weak but this one actually yeah. looks like pretty fucking decent it's like a nice animatronic facial i mean it is kind of like I guess if you're saying that the guy who designed the Predator or had a hand in the Predator, you can see it. Oh, you yeah. Know, in this, the sculpt and the way that the motors are, you know, moving yeah. the eyebrows yeah. and mm -hmm. the it's lips and all that stuff. better in this one. But it's, it's a that, lot better. It's, it's in more this articulated. One. Yeah. It's, it's more specific in There's certain places. There's a lot places. more craft put into this one. But that first scene, it's still happening like in the dark, which yes. I think is yeah. important yes. because it's in it shadows is. and <laughs> the thing no. talks and all that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> It was like a little battle about this. this. But, the ultimate fight between lightness and dark. Yeah, yeah, light and dark. But also I thought that the the choreography, and maybe this is what you were saying, it's like, you know, they take what they've seen and they try to 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 add to it. The choreography in that first scene was like, huh, 
This is like pretty decent fight choreography yeah, for a monster. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, like monster? In, when he's fighting in the woods with the monster. Yeah, yeah. See, I disagree. I thought it felt like they didn't know how to fight each other. I Aww. felt, I felt like it lacked. Yeah, with yeah. All those spin, like he spun he over the a top lot. Of the guy. I mean, he, I can see what he's saying just because some of the editing. You know, the Giver, the Giver had, the Giver had good moves. He did, but together yeah. as a choreography, like a fight scene. It didn't work for me. I thought it lacked. I th- it just didn't seem like they knew what they were doing as far as fighting with each other. Single moves, yes. So is it like, are we saying, you think it's the editing that betrays it or you think it was just badly choreographed? I, th- I think it's both. I think a little style. bit of both. I would, but like, but okay, but, okay, guys, we... but remember a few weeks ago, a few, if you, if you listened a few weeks ago, ladies and gentlemen, we watched Ninja Dear 3. Listener. <laughs> so let's compare, like, let's just think about it. You know, yeah, I get it. Right. Like, you can look at no, they you can a single thing, or you can base it on things you've seen. You know, I can, I, you know, I definitely. I, I mean, I know what you're talking about. I know where the editing feels like. You're like, well, he just jumped, and then he's like over here because I think your mind is supposed to fill in the gap of like, well, he landed or he did this, that, and the other <laughs> thing. You know, because it's like, I, well, it feels like it was working on Colin where he like put the pieces. He's like, oh, this is a, a fight between a, a man yeah. and an alien armor. And a, alien and a just, it felt inve- I guess it, it felt inventive to me. I mean, you know, no, no, I, was, I was like, oh, that's an interesting. I don't know if I've seen that move or like I've, you know, where I actually have seen. I think I've seen stuff like that. And like in the animated in the anime stuff, they do those, you know. They grab the two sides and do like a spin through the air and then right. land somewhere else. Well, that's right? definitely Power Rangers shit. Uh, I mean, that, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Here they come again. I wasn't Power gonna say. Rangers. I wasn't gonna say. <laughs> no, it, yeah, I'll just say that's that. That's just that type of like. It's just that type of wire foo, you know. The, yeah. the you get hit and you spin like in the air, like yep. backwards. Very you dramatic. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Very dramatic. Because I mean, yeah, it's almost like a it's like a ballet. <laughs> it's like a choreographed <laughs> ballet. And the fact that this guy could do it, like wearing the getup he's wearing. Yeah, I'm always surprised they can do what they can do wearing what they're wearing. I mean, I'm sure it's very soft. I'm sure it looks better. Yeah, this than looked it, like, like right. Th- it's looks armor like a big armor, but it looks very thin. Like yeah, because there's so scenes where he like puts his elbow up and you can see it kind of smush it into the mask where right. you're like oh shit that's actually like really soft like yeah, right. almost like a spongy it's material it's but unless somebody's <laughs> it touching awesome. it it looks yeah. like a solid yeah. piece it's of foam. armor yeah and it's got cool lights in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so yeah so oh, fuck where were we at in the story so what he uh, uh, fight in the, the woods in the fight woods. in the woods yeah. So we're 10 minutes into it of a two hour and eight minute movie. Go. Yeah, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, the. I feel like everyone just gave up. <laughs> we That's where we get the uh, introduced to another character who is at the dig, who is a professor, but we actually find out he is a covert American agent or government guy going after Kronos. And they still don't understand that Kronos is monsters and. And, uh, and I, I kind of like that. I mean, it's fucking stupid, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the whole, like, Sean, Sean and Corey are out and they hear the guys yelling when they're attacked by the Zoonoid. <laughs> and, you know, they're like, did you hear that? Yeah. It sounded like a scream or whatever. And he's like, I'll go take care of that bear. You, know, you go back to camp and get help. I'll, I'll take, take care, care of the bear. bear. <laughs> He'll take care of the bear. Oh, shit. (laughs) It's such a nice, like, 90s. So 90s. (laughs) So 90s. 90s. Like, there's your catchphrase. Well, the dig crew is made up of there's her father, the professor, is leading the dig, right? Marcus? Mm -hmm. Which is always going to be the the bearded guy with the hat who's the... uh, In my opinion, he's he's our our quartermass character. He's our... Well, but every... They always have him. I mean, like, when you have a... uh, There's, like, an archaeological dig and... Your guy wanders into it. There's always that guy is mm-hmm. like the lead. He's it's always the same guy. And Sometimes he wears a pith helmet. And he's kind of dressed like, like yeah, yeah. A I jungle say, hat. He's kind of dressed like a uh, dude Safari. from Jurassic Park. I was gonna say he looked like yeah. a dude from yeah. Jurassic Park. Park. That's exactly uh, what Sam I was thinking. Neil, whatever his yeah. name is. Oh yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. Always the blue denim shirt and the khaki pants. Yeah, the blue denim shirt. Yeah. Hat and the yeah. And you've and also I'm, got oh sorry. No, I was going to say, and of course, the uh, dig is being funded by Kronos. Kronos. In disguise, though. In disguise as, I don't know, the Trent Corporation or some shit. Yeah. Trent Group yeah. or whatever. But there's a couple of smarmy money men yep. and women hanging around, and they yeah. have the security force. They're just like, we got to go. We got to go now. Yeah. It's just there's like, these deadlines the that you have to, 
And we're like, what are they digging for? Well, we can't tell you that because it's a, uh, like, everyone knows, but it's a secret. Like, she can't tell yeah. David Hayter, or, you know, Sean. Well, I kind of like that, right? Because, I mean, I like how Corey's like, well, me and my dad were the scientists that go after the kooky uh, right. shit that you see in the tableau. The you know, they're foot. basically Bigfoot, like, alien, like, yeah. ancient alien uh, diggers or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Which, you know, that's cool, I guess. I mean, I, I actually get that part. In the in the archaeology world, they'd be considered, like, laughing stock if they're yeah, just like, sure. yeah, we're going to look for Bigfoot. Like, no, yeah. they so have to... So they're not just going to come and be yeah. like, searching for UFOs in Utah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Like, <laughs> fucking kooks, withdraw your... Uh, yeah. <laughs> withdraw your money. No, we're looking yeah. for real shit. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're looking for... Look for the aliens. <laughs> yeah, let's get history check. Well, the Kronos Corporation <laughs> obviously must know that they're doing this, because that's why they're Well, because Kronos knows, like, Kronos they know knows, that man. the Zonoid technology and the Giver shit comes from aliens, but they don't really know a lot about the alien. That's what's kind of interesting, what I've always thought about the Giver uh, mythology. The idea that a, a corporation, almost without necessarily understanding the alien technology, is like, fuck it, let's use this shit. We'll make monsters. We'll fucking put ourselves as the head of, like, you know, we'll... You know, the whole plan in the uh, comic books is we'll have Zoonoids in every, like, right. government. A Zoonoid will be president. Every, and then one day we'll just all, like, Rawr, monster <laughs> out and, like, take over the world at once. <laughs> Kronos oh. is everywhere and all this shit. But I like the idea that a corporation that still doesn't, un- like, we don't know what the Giver is, but we want it. Like we want, it, it means power. It just and we means want power. That. It's fucking tits. It's yeah. like a, and it, it's cool that you don't. It's like the quintessential nuclear warhead codes, you know, yeah. like they need that to be the one in power. For sure. Yeah. And just the idea that they're fucking with shit that they, they're like, well, we know aliens came here and, but we don't know why they left. And <laughs> this is shit I'm getting from the cartoon more than this. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say, well, but I'm I'm just, just, there were a couple of plot points well, where I was still like, see it in this where, you know, well, they want the, uh, because I mean, I guess it's no mystery that they find in this cave, a giant spaceship. That's been left over from whenever the aliens first yeah. came it's to like Earth a and, and grew yeah. the life on Earth. Yeah, they terraformed us. But they they discover that there's a another Giver unit in the thing, and the, the evil company steals it. And I'm like, they take it, and it's like they're taking it away from us and all this. But I'm like, what are they planning to do with it? Because yeah. in my mind, I'm like, well, you got a Giver unit. I expect a Giver Giver fight, right? Yes. Like that's yeah. what's gonna happen. It's Giver <laughs> yeah. two. Yes. You're gonna have two Givers. Yes. I was actually thinking maybe like they would find this ship and there'd be you know multiple Givers in already in there or something. Yeah. But okay, whatever. At least that happened. They found the thing and it was like so. But they don't really. I never got what their uh, end game was. Their ultimate. Yeah, and maybe that's what they you're just explaining, wanted... Travis. That they just because they know it's a weapon, they want it. Yeah, they just want all the alien technology. They but, don't necessarily, they're not like looking for a philosophy. Because, okay, like, I guess that's the idea, right? Sean Barker, uh, whatever. <laughs> he's looking for a philosophy. I have this weapon. What do I do with it? What am why I. Why do you want me? Yeah, why do you, why, you, like, I can't detach it from myself. I'm not the guy for this. Like, the alien, uh, if, if, I don't think we said it, but the ship, like, calls to. Yeah. Giver's got these awesome pulsating uh, things oh, that the guy awesome. actually, yeah, it's awesome. Darling? No, or no, glittery. Disgusting. Uh, no, it's all, you that's what makes it awesome. Disgusting. That's what awesome? makes it awesome. Oh. <laughs> Giver's like a grotesque superhero. It's like I think Giver's the best fucking because uh, it looks painful, amalgamation like, of oh, horror and superhero. It's, yeah, where it's just like it's almost like Cronenberg. Where it's like it's inside of me. It's you know? growing. Yeah, this thing is growing. It looks like he's got two mosquito bites on the back of his head. Yeah, like a vampire like missed this part. Like a shitty vampire was like, ugh. Yeah, in the uh, in the uh, in the cartoon (laughs) or in the comic book, those are actually on his shoulder blades. But you know, for the movie sake, we need something more visual. Saving, they want to. Yeah. Oh, but it, no, you're right. It is more horrifying, especially like it's earlier, horrifying. earlier on in the movie. Um, I think they show you. It was in one of his dreams, I think, where he's just like being torn. Like the yeah. the, the pieces oh, yeah. aren't on him, and he's being like held together by them. And he's like, ah. Yeah, they're like they're, that's a, like they're a nice uh, actual <laughs> homage to. Uh, there's like a nice few homage images to the original cartoon in this movie where. Like in the first scene where the drug dealers shoot the uh, steam mist and then Guyver comes out of the steam. <laughs> yeah. That's like Guyver's first appearance. I wish they would have done like the close up of like his like 
his wrist, his belt. Right, you show little bits of it like, before yeah, because that's reveal. what in, in the original uh, cartoon it shows Guy were coming out of a mist like that, sure, and then I, that is an homage to. Uh, the very first time Sho Fukamachi has the Giver unit like getting on him, it like kind of clasps over his sure. eye. Or like there's he, a famous a image, like, oh. like one of the famous like covers is actually the Giver with Sho pulling the eyepiece off, showing that. So that yeah, his little like nightmare dream sequence is right. kind of an homage to that image of a uh, uh, just the original that art. That makes more sense. But he's also scared because, I mean, just the idea that he is, he feels like a monster. He doesn't, I mean, I wish, the only thing that sucks about this movie (laughs) is moving on to new, yeah, (laughs) goddammit, is moving on to different characters. Like, if you could stay with Ms. Key, you could, you should be able to see how, like, I mean, they kind of show it with Corey when she gets kidnapped by Cronus and uh, Marcus actually turns into a, her father turns into a monster, which I love. It's that whole idea that once you deal with the devil, you're in it, dude. You have to, you don't fucking work with Kronos and get away scot-free. You no, you become out, yeah. a fucking monster yeah. and you work with that. I mean, I like that, that he's, you know, doing this kind of behind his daughter's back to get the funding and, mm. and, but when, uh, when, uh, show saves her, well, I mean, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about this, but when show saves her, how Corey's not necessarily accepted because it's like, well, here's monsters that just attacked me. And then this guy's a fucking monster. It's like just because the, they helped. I like how in the Giver universe, that doesn't mean uh, in the Giver universe, it doesn't mean that like, oh, he helped me. He's a good guy. No, to people, it's like, no, oh, you're a fucking monster. Mm-hmm. You're a fucking monster now. You know, it's yeah. not just like, oh, the Giver goes inside you and, you know, mm. he'll always be a monster. And, uh, where was it? Uh, I, I think it was also mentioned in the first movie, but the idea that the Giver unit is like it is, although it's a piece of alien technology from the same alien group that created the us and then the Zoonoid uh, genetic trigger, but it's created as a weapon against Zoonoids. That's what it's a weapon. That's what it's designed and for, that, right? Yeah, for hu- and like not, for humans not to necessarily. wear. The, well, any it was but for it's like, is, it is was it? for the aliens. The aliens just gave it to us to try on us. But since humans are weapons anyway, it's almost like putting a Giver on a human is the most fuck. It's like putting a gun in a human's hand. This is why I also love the whole idea that a human at his potential is the most fucking dangerous thing in the universe. You know, give us a fucking gun, give us any weapon, and our potential is fucking amazing, right? Like, that's what scared the aliens off in the Giver universe, or that's what they think, uh, are they supposed. Because we see a little bit of a flashback in this movie where he gets plugged into the actual alien ship and has, like, this dream of these little miniature ships, like, blasting off on the, you know, rocky horizon. Or they come, uh... you see them coming to Earth, I guess, (laughs) in the volcanic past. Yeah, they look like little (laughs) pods. I like them. That's a cool, because, you know, I I gotta say, for when it comes to, like, spaceship designs, that's an original spaceship design. Well, it kind of looks like oh, the yeah. E.T. ship, yeah? Ah, yeah. shut up. No, it's... <laughs> <laughs> All right, now... <laughs> it takes when, off and when it, when it When it took what off... Was the, this yes. island Earth? But it looks like a pod. When it took off, yes. Before before that, I didn't think of it, but when it took off, yeah, I looked a little E.T. Yeah. I'll give you that. Okay. Come on. <laughs> like <that>. Oh, <laughs> shut up! <laughs> no! <laughs> so, yeah, I like that scene, though, how, because, like, yeah, Sean keeps trying to talk to it, and it's just making weird, like... <laughs> right. <laughs> Which I wasn't sure if those were on the soundtrack. It was a, There was a point where it kicked in, I'm like, True. oh, he's hearing that sound. <laughs> right. Okay. We couldn't tell between the... Dun, 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 oh, yeah, dun, dun, the music... Dun, dun, dun. That's right. The, the three what, themes. What three Sean's tracks, doing yeah. there, just imagine, that's their action score. Dun, dun, For dun, every dun, scene. Dun, 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 dun. Over and over and over oh. again from, what was it? But Les? it got quiet, you guys bitched. That's <laughs> why they're like, we need to get this back on here. Yeah, there's dun, 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 other dun, dun, scenes dun. that are played, like action scenes play with no music whatsoever. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? It was Les, weird. Which Les I like the silence. Les Carpool the third, was that the Yeah, Les Carpool the third. Les Claypool the third. Which I Never was. hire that guy, Hollywood. Don't well, hire him. Maybe they just have money. Based on <laughs> this. It was him and his keyboard, but that's the extent of like what he could think up. Was he's, like, he's like, I have an idea. 
Dun, we don't really dun, like that. Dun, dun, All right, dun, I have another idea. Less, that's the same song. <laughs> yeah. Wait, we'll make it longer. Yeah. Is that the Halloween theme? We'll play it longer. <laughs> yeah, just play it. All right, more, more. <laughs> no, it's kind of like a Terminator 2. I was going to say, it reminded me of Terminator. It's a Terminator. It felt like Terminator. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought of. I would give it more than that than Halloween. It's awful. Easily the worst thing about this movie is the goddamn score. Yeah, it's... It's, it's, it leaves something to be desired. <laughs> yeah, namely sure. a better score. That's why I'm like, oh, it's silent. This is awesome. <laughs> then everybody's like, oh, they don't like the silence? I, I enjoy the silence. It was awkward. I'm like, I've never seen this before. They're just as action and there's no song. Yeah, it was pretty cool. No music. Okay. Just, yeah. Can we get to the part where all the cliff. monsters are outside in the middle of the day? It's yes. awesome. <laughs> it's so awesome. <laughs> now, there's awesome. Again, there's the ever growing <laughs> battle between lightness and darkness. <laughs> what did you Travis think of it, Holly? I thought it was awful. You oh. can't have monsters in the daylight. It makes them look fake. Yes. You can now, see you can see the texture of their That's their, their you yes. not no. um, having the uh ha- what's what? it called the uh dis- suspension, suspension of disbelief. Suspension of disbelief, yeah. You can now, see you can we'll, see, we'll see the how fabric. We can say this of the after pastor. how many drinks. <laughs> just push it just, oh, <laughs> you're, you're depressed and you don't believe. <laughs> just push it. That's going to end up being. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about. I, I mean, I get what you're saying, but, but I think they're awesome no, suits. No, they, they look soft. They look soft. Like you, right. you like humans I'm look soft. soft. Yeah. Like, uh, I thought so. I was like, yeah, like you look soft. <laughs> you look Whoa. soft, motherfucker. Thanks. It's not a cut down. Yeah, yeah. thank no. you. No, it's. I don't think it's an issue with the sculpting, right? Because that's what you're saying. No, it's like if you want to go and paint the thing, like and the detail are, and everything is yeah. all. It's all really good. It's all right. great. It's but, all. If you saw that in real life, you'd fucking run away. You'd be like, that's a monster. Well, yeah. <laughs> Somehow, if I saw a monster coming up, yeah, I'm gonna no, run. If you saw that if somebody jumped out in that insect thing, you would fucking run away. Yes, but I would. <laughs> because it looks awesome. Yeah, but because what, it'd be terrifying. But the daylight, awesome. the daylight monsters is what recalls Power Rangers to me because yes. they always fought those motherfuckers always in the daylight. In the day. Broad well, daylight, awesome. always. In the day. But like I'm saying, like it doesn't. You can't like them being in the daylight. You can't see any like f- I don't see any flaws in it. I think you just. When you get a monster, I think you kind of prefer it at night. Like it's the same reason why you want if like you're gonna you, do a CG monster, see, you want to have it at night. Well, you I'll tell you what it more. is. There's something about the like to to have a monster work. I think on on a person, mm. you have to. It has to somehow engage your imagination. Mm-hmm. And the way that Hollywood does that is by showing you glimpses of a thing. Your imagination works over time mm-hmm. to try and fill in the blanks, and it creates this thing in your head that's like. You know, I think I saw something yeah. there, but it looked really cool, but I didn't get a really good look at it. When you see the thing in broad daylight and these guys are tussling with each other, <laughs> what it brings to mind is, and I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people who love this kind of stuff, but it, it the Godzilla movies yes, of the 70s, exactly. you exactly see two guys like. in suits just kind of, and then it becomes in your head, well, it's, it's two like guys rock. in suits. This is very silly. They're in suit, you know, rubber yes. suits, beating oh. each other's chest. Or beating each other's chest. Beating their okay, chest and punching you, each other. No, it's like Rock'em Sock'em Monster Robot. Just let yeah. me give you a <laughs> different... It collapses the imagination <laughs> let, me, no, I would, let me give you a different perspective, and this is why I say it increases the imagination. <laughs> it's because I think your whole life, it's monsters in darkness, monsters in, like, in the shadow. Like, they only come out... I've, I've always... I mean, how many times have I sat here saying, like, why are ghosts scary? What do they only come out at night? Like, I like the idea yeah. that some, a monster is not like going to be like, not till nighttime. <laughs> I, I just I, like I like the idea that something horrifying will come out in the daytime, and it will be like especially especially horror movies. I'm almost more shocked when something horrifying happens in the daylight because it's just like holy fuck! You know, all these movies continually set us up for nighttime, nighttime, night. Like nothing scary happens till nighttime because it's that caveman thing in our yeah. heads, right? Yeah. But. I like the idea that they're like, nah, fucking lions eat in the day too, motherfucker. Yeah. Like, like I mean, uh, danger can happen, and, and that's why it, it captures my imagination seeing monsters out in the daytime because it's like, holy like shit, pinhead. see, it's not yeah. limited yeah. to like being under the bed. Yeah. You know what I mean? It but when you like, see it, you don't see 
like guys in suits at that point in time. You see the monsters. <laughs> I mean, I do, but I, mean, I also we, see the monsters because they're awesome. Because we saw this side by side. We saw it at night, and Kyle and I both thought, wow, this is an improvement in the monster. This is good stuff. And then they show it again in the daytime, and we're like, oh. I'm telling you. Watch, it's side by side. We see it both It's the same times. sculpt. Yeah. So we're saying the design. Well, Predator don't have was a in the daytime, with. except for like the but last they, half. They barely show you that motherfucker until <laughs> nighttime. It's at night when he's got like, there's all this different jungle light that yeah. they can play on it. Oh, but that's that why I think camouflage. it was great because this is still just one scene we're talking about. Yeah, and I mean, and before let's get to the fucking awesome, awesome, awesome. The, I mean, the best shot in the whole fucking movie when. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, like, yeah, long pause. Pause. Like, yeah. oh, shit. we left him on edge. I died. <laughs> I was like, "What part, Travis? When, uh, Please tell us." When Guyver jumps out of the water behind the monster. And he fucking comes down, and then there's that nice, like, still image that you would get out of, like, a Lone Wolf and Cub movie of, like, it you is. know, the still, the tr- still ninja, and then the head falling. Oh, that's very true. That part was really confusing. I it was wasn't. not sure what well, happened. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, confusing. I know what you were talking about. The yeah, action it, was too fast for this. No, it was the, <laughs> it was the framing, because I was like, yeah, a he, bit. he came down on him, and then wait, it was what? like, wait, is he, are they, it looked to me like Guyver was on the ground, passed out. And yeah. the monster had fallen on top of him. Oh, yeah, no, that's totally it. Was, it was very confusing. Yeah, and I was like, watch what it the again. fuck? And then his head it's very, like, oh, I mean, now I know where gravity is. I mean, it's is. done so slowly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, like, he yeah. does jump really high in there. You're like, all right, come And back very down. slowly, because yeah. it has that sort of Japanese fantasy right. element where... <laughs> <laughs> it's just like lower, not even drop, like lower. I don't see what you guys are talking. That's not confusing at all. <laughs> he does that, and then he sort of squishes the other Zoonoid. Like that's awesome. I mean, that's up, the then, best when he like it's smashes funny because he just kind of pushes on him. And then, like, when he's, we, he, like, backs him up against the tree, and right. then, like, his blood, the blood, like, just spills out of his mouth can all over we, the place. Yeah. It's about like, that's fact, Guyver cartoon no. shit. Can we talk about the fact that every single bad guy in this movie bleeds out of his mouth? Well, every single one. Even the Guyver, one. when he gets even injured, the Guyver. you need to watch <laughs> the Guyver <laughs> cartoon. Every single one of them <laughs> bleeds out of his mouth. You need to watch the Guyver, well, because they get in stomach, and just, when you get pierced in the stomach, it... Pushes blood. Not all of them got pierced in the stomach. I'm just saying. Well, they were crushing the innards. <laughs> Mostly okay? they get, yeah. They Fine, get, John. If I <laughs> kick you in the chest and the ribs and you, you, you know, you're. Your, your lungs, your lungs are bleeding. Right, yeah, 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 they just explode. That's actually, once again, that's like cartoon fan service, where it's like, dude, I mean, everything in the cartoon is bleeding mouths. And I tried to show my fucking, like, 10-year-old nephew, Guyver. <laughs> Look at it! it showed, like, Guyver <laughs> broke a monster's neck and blood spilled out of his mouth. My nephew's like, I don't know if I should. <laughs> I was like, fuck, I saw that. I was excited, I think, when I was, like, 11. Uncle Travis, this is weird. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like, all right, guys, yeah, we'll go back to black and white movies. I thought you were, you know, of of age to be like, ooh, yeah. too much blood. Or, or he was like, what? Anyway. But it leads to the to the one scene in the movie where I was genuinely concerned about what was going to happen next because he kills the two monsters after fighting in the lake for an hour. It was awesome. It, it was pretty good. For an hour. For it was hour. fantastic. It was, like, oh it was the best hour of the movie. So but long. then, like, because, uh, what's her name? Corey. Corey's father, Corey. who is a monster. Oh, we need to talk about how we who, got there. Who fl- we do. Who flipped, uh, who flipped a truck, and then that ten minutes later, that truck just fell off a cliff somehow. And exploded. And it was exploded. action. Just action. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fuck it. No relation to the rest they of the movie. They needed something to But, blow up. like, he kills two monsters, it. and then he hears, like, Corey's dad, and then he's like, Zhoo! And he like jumps up in the air and he's gonna come it down and like awesome, kill like, someone. Fifty spin like <laughs> with the elbow blade and everything, and then it just like goes to black. And well, because she jumps out and she's like, "No!" no! Like to the guy, there's a monster. It's oh, no, I'm gonna kill it. Right. Yeah. And, and she's jumping black. in front of it. And I'm genuinely like, concerned. Like, oh, yeah. drama like, is did happening he, did he here. Cocoy? It's did working. He on... dad? Right. Because she's got her arm off. Like, she gonna, he's gonna cut her arm off. Yeah. yeah. It's like is she gonna get in the way of this? And just like, and nothing happens. You see, like, the pinpoint of the blade, like, like in right front in her of her. Eyes. It would have been better if there was just a little bing. And, like, <laughs> well, like, that's when, like, like that. he turns back human, and then, like, you know, he's like, come on, let's go. And she's kind of fucking freaked out because it's like, well, you're a monster, too. Mm. Yeah. 
Well, this all leads to the big climactic fight, which takes place back in the in with the uh, the head of in the, the Kronos Corporation. In, it's well, in he's the on the, well, no, he's the old just guy. The guy. Yeah. Okay, well, but pressure. he never shows up. The liaison, yeah, that's no, for he just, he just like talks to him on the uh, the video phone. The yeah, telecom, he's got like yeah. a video thing. He's got Skype like a, before yeah, there was Skype. Skyping. <laughs> So, but the the gist of this fight at the end, the Titanic battle between <laughs> the head zoonoid and the Giver, is that the head zoonoid has what do you say ingested? He's Givered himself. He got he Givered himself <laughs> yeah. somehow. Yeah. He sucked it into him, yeah. and he has he now become like spaghetti. Because that would be a whole other like special effect if they showed a Giver. Or, they already, uh, they already right. spent their budget. I think, yeah, something becoming a Giver. They're yeah. like, no, we can't do that. Again. <laughs> We'd have to show it open. The, yeah. the tentacles come out, and we're supposed to yeah. the body saying, we can't like we can't melt and like yeah. So it becomes a zoonoid Giver. But I like that. That's cool. The Giver. Kind of, that is cool. That is super Shredder. That is awesome. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, solid. That's not he bad. looked. He looked cool. I didn't need to be a he zoonoid, cool. but. Oh, that was, I thought that's because, like another dynamic. Because, like, I mean, that's like classic Bizarro shit. Like, the original Giver cartoon comics, there's three Giver units. That's it. Three. Red, blue, and green. Yep. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, this, this movie has it, though. <laughs> Basically, though, it's, like, it's, it's, uh, it's blue, black, and tan, I guess. Okay. So, so yeah, in the original Giver comic book, yeah, there's three Giver units. Sho Fukumachi gets one. A agent from Kronos accidentally gets too close and gets one. Oh, and then a mysterious figure gets the third one. I'll leave that up to the audience to watch the original animation oh, to shit. find out who it is. And uh, so I did like how it's like, oh, this is a nice callback. You got to have a Giver too, right? It's one of those things where when you have heroes right, yeah. that there's got to be another guy. Yeah, it's it's better than like Giver versus Giver. It really is. It's uh, it adds something else to it. It's like, all right, the uh, fucking Zonoids are already a threat. Put a fucking Zonoid Giver. Oh, it's like the ultimate showdown. But there's a crack the in this showdown. in the control metal. Which if yeah. we watch the first damaged, movie, we damaged. know the control metal is what controls it all. <laughs> oh, it keeps everything. Control uh, metal. I forgot about that. Yeah, the yeah I did too. That was sci-fi. Metal. One of those sci-fi word, or you know what do you call it? The sci-fi alphabet soup. Yeah. Control metal. Control metal. What? It's awesome. It's metal that controls the It controls Giver. it. Don't, don't worry about if it. You get, it's the only thing that can really damage the Giver. Uh, Herbert East. Metal. Herbert East the, talked about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dr. East. <laughs> Dr. East yeah, talked Dr. about that one. That's yeah. awesome. So, uh, That's yeah, so. You gotta check this episode out. So what? Yeah, uh, Sean has the vision that uh, the Giver units were a weapon because I mean they just the hum. I mean the humans were created by the aliens. That's the whole idea. Of this this is why. Yeah, I mean this whole idea harkens back to the whole chariots of the gods. Uh, the past few weeks we've been watching lots of movies that are dealing kind of with Quater Mass in the Pit. The idea of a uh, of a spaceship with things that created us that we spawned from that we have genetic uh attachments to or mm. or uh origins from yeah and um and they fight they fight <laughs> for the ship they fight a lot for the ship. They fight for a very long time. But that was like, awesome. There's more zone. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. that's, long time. that's my. Th- I'm making T-shirts yeah. that just say that was awesome. It was Travis below it. But that was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. That's why you watch. Like, we make a point. But that was awesome. But that was awesome. You, you but, said that like it was a negative. I don't get it. They fight for a long time. Do you not like fights? It's like what? You get to see more of them. Yeah. I like. Well, I've always but, like this to come more. Get than Revealed. Like, like oh, the, yeah. the His, female security the gets female revealed. One, which well, she I actually thought she was kind of cool. Which she's like, different than the other she's zone different looking. She's uh, got like I mean, face makeup on. I mean as she a sucked, but the the she make, did suck. the she makeup. just went after the uh the commander I, agent guy. I liked the design. Yeah, she wasn't too bad. Yeah. Um I liked um Marcus's like design kind of had like a weird like I yeah. know what the yeah, fuck. It was, it was like crab legs problem. coming yeah. out of his Although, mouth. You could do anything with Zoonoids, man. They're interesting monsters. You could do fucking what, anything. Yeah, pretty pretty much, sometimes yeah. you that can do them like badly, salamander. and sometimes you can do them well. Well, sometimes you can do them true. goodly. Some look like frogs. Yeah, that was one looked one like, looked a like a shitty ninja turtle. Which I wonder yeah. if. Well, but hold on. Let's think about this. <laughs> like sometimes, because Steve Wang did like 
two or three suits for Hell Comes to Frog Town. It's like, oh, could that shit. have been something hanging up? Now, I didn't, Just wa- like now I didn't watch it. Just like that monster in Zoonoid and the guy ever won that one monster was the pre- looked like yeah, the Predator. It's, fucking it's just predator. like, oh, fuck. <laughs> now, I didn't watch it, but were there frogs in Hell Comes to Frog Town? Yeah. I'm just, I, it's just, I yeah, don't know if it's a metaphor. Like, but there was really frogs. only two, like, actually. Like suits? Yeah, like, the rest of them were like, you're in the background. Put on a frog mask. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the other ones were actual, like, yeah. Steve So maybe Wayne. it was one of the frog masks, and they built a body. Well, no, that was definitely one of the more articulated. Okay. Come on, for sure. <laughs> maybe not the mouth, but everything else. Yeah, yeah. but they, had, yeah. they whipped out the old uh, uh, Lisker character from part one, which I've always liked. That. That's a cool monster. Yeah, that was cool. Mm-hmm. I like him. He had the bump on the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, you don't remember. Want to show up later? The one Michael the, Berryman the last, was when the they first when one. they sent the two agents of like go kill that target, and then he just drags the two agents back. Yeah. You know, the guy with the sunglasses, yeah, 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 the mustache. Like, There's one yeah. more. Yeah. 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 He's a cool monster. He's cool. <clears throat> well, would we be spoiling the movie to say the guy ever wins? What does I he mean? Win? There's an epic like ten minute fight. Yeah. What does he get around out of the ship? There's a ten minute fight. I mean, aside from he gets the girl. Well, it's one of those things where I mean, I like how I mean. I always thought of the guy versus it's kind of a tragic story. It's kind of the idea that like, well, fuck, you sometimes don't get all the answers you want and sometimes don't yeah. get like. It feels like that's where we go. Yeah, right because it's like it I felt say, like they're setting up a guy for three that never they wanted to do Sure. One, because yeah, they would have answered who the, the guy on the Skype call was. Right, probably. right. That's a setup. Those are supposed to be Zoa Lords. They're supposed to be like in the from the, ca- like the, from the first one. Yeah. In the cartoon or the comic book, there's like twelve Zoa Lords that have psychic control over all the Zoa Noids. So it's Damn. like they're almost like the closest biologically to the original aliens that created us or some weird shit. Mm-hmm. But did we say how, how they killed how they killed him? <clears throat> the last guy? The well his control damage his control yeah, metal was damaged. apparently she's a She's crack, a, crack, crack, crack shot. shot. Yeah. Crack. Well, uh, it's nowhere. a very positive female um, character. <laughs> very she's strong. a scientist who doesn't have a lot of weaknesses. You put a gun in her hands and she's lethal, like dead shot. Yeah. But it's kind of like nice, right? When somebody her, helps, yeah. like you know. And then he like yeah, and then, arc he's, then he has his death. peck lasers. Oh, didn't he pull the thing out of his the, head? Yeah, he pulled it out of his head. Then yeah, he started melting. Out. Yeah, he started melting. Because yeah. what happens when the control metal is damaged? Right. It eats you alive. There it is. There it is. Clay pool. Yeah. And then he gets, he pulls open his chest. and Oh, yeah. He shoots him with his peck lasers. the mega. Which I think we had in the first guy. Mega peck lasers. We did, yeah. Man, once the armor he, comes once apart, he came out of the body, so that's like the ultimate Superman. like nuclear weapon of the Giver. Yeah, the, the inner force is can, it, it's the contained by the uh, or something like right. by the armor. <laughs> what it's called? Once you open it up, the force comes. It kind of like Mega Cyclops Smasher. Is, uh, called the Mega Smasher. Right. You know, the Mega Smasher. Yeah. But Mega it's supposed Smasher. to go for miles. But I can imagine because the spaceship was <laughs> it there, went like 20 feet. and it seemed like they couldn't uh, damage yeah, the spaceship. Yeah, 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 it didn't go for miles. It did not. They put a little hole in a table. Like, oh, it went through that. That's cool. <laughs> that's not the, the one that thing just I shows say. the power. That's what's brilliant about some of the editing on this. Like when someone turns into a monster, I mean, they'll start walking off screen and they still got like shreds of clothes blowing into the shot. Oh, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, that's yeah, really yeah. cool. Oh, they did shit, that. Yeah, they did do that. That's awesome. That's good like, idea. There was a look away. back there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just adds a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. And the, uh, I mean, do we need to say anything about David Hayter's performance? In, I mean, uh, in, I mean, uh, very emotional. <laughs> very. Um, <laughs> Dude, like the dude knows how to turn around. He, he, oh yeah, he does. Whip, whip turns and put his like his his he knows head how to point. on his forearm. Yes, yeah. he knows at a point he knows how to like lean against a tree and be like. I actually oh. thought that was cool because that was almost like character mix mixing. It's like they knew the guy in the suit was gonna point that way for like. Weird characters, so they're like, dude, why don't you point? <laughs> that way it looks like it's just something that's so it doesn't be like, you, bitch, yeah, hey, you. do what I say. <laughs> do that. Why are you pointing at me? <laughs> like, I'm you. the only one here. I know you're talking to me. You don't have to point. <laughs> yeah. What was the rude, uh, the line where you like almost like completely screwed no. things up? No. <laughs> he says no. No. He, yeah, dude. Which I did. It's a very like, dramatic. He's got, he's got no. this wind up with his face. Dude, he like <laughs> gets ready for it. Like, yeah. 
<laughs> no. It's like, holy fuck. He meant it. Yeah. Yeah. We're not saying that this is like a good Even, performance. No, but it's but very, amusing. It's very This yeah, is like his dude. first time out. This is like amateur actor. <laughs> well, he was uh, a voice actor, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this well, is that's why, what he became, I'm sure. This is why I think, like, because I can't. Someone's David, like, David, you've got David. a face for radio. Because I can't say he's a bad actor. Maybe he's just not a good, I mean, maybe he's a good voice actor. I, I've never played the uh, the Metal Gear Solid game. They're good. See, this is why they were like, David, why don't you He's write what you're it. feeling? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. don't don't move your face. But, I mean, I thought that was a... Just real quickly before we get into Igor. I thought that was a good scene, though, when uh, Kronos, the, the main bad guy, was trying to convince Sean, like, you know, we're both, like, bastards of an unwilling right. parent. You know, the idea that, dude, we're both monsters and we're trying to figure out the technology that did this to us but Solid uh point. yeah that's yeah when the nice. p- creature from black lagoons trying to convince him that's to, a great monster design it's dude. a really it looks really good it looks it's fucking l- great he even has lifted. really nice like a little way lifted like they yeah. they took a f- they were inspired li- maybe well, they were inspired. The one and we were talking about this earlier the the monster squads creature from uh, the black lagoon looked the most like this yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it didn't the look like the, the 50s creature but yeah. the the re- yeah the redone yeah mm-hmm. even so like, but eh. yeah like travis said it's really well done it like, is like, good. Like, good. Mouth is really articulate I'm like, yeah. is this it's like one of the only zone noise like you've it. ever seen like just talk and, right you know like lip movement articulation in the lips it's really good it's really great yeah with the yeah yeah. Eye movement and Solid. whatnot, like little fucking... Fantastic. That's all I want. They improved a lot in uh, whatever the three years <laughs> that it was Indeed. since the first one. All right, so that uh, wraps up. Uh, I think that's uh, wrapping up the Giver. Giver. Yes. All right, so if you stick with us, Giver's listeners, on the other side of Igor's mailbag, we'll give you our final thoughts around the table on the Giver. But first of all, Igor, where are the... Igor! Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Well, right, thank you, Igor. He's looking thank good, you. you guys. Well, you know what? Fuck Igor. All right. I'm just saying, he's looking good. That's all. Oh, boys, this is what happens when you bring a woman into the freak show. <laughs> then Igor comes in and bam, there it is. Kismet. <laughs> All right, so uh, if you want to get a hold of us, you can write to us on Facebook or at facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. And we're also on Twitter. Our handle is Sat Freak Show. And we're also available. You can uh, reach out and say something to us on good old fashioned email at Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. <clears throat> Victor Bingham writes in this week about Guyver and says, uh, Guyver 2. And says the film is good, and the actor who plays the main character also played Snake in the Metal Gear Solid series. Yes. Sorry, we stole your thunder on that one, Victor, but we do appreciate <laughs> you writing in. And uh, flash facts. Mm-hmm. There you go. Mm-hmm. Boom. Uh, so that's all the mail. Oh, all right. So you guys. that brings us to. Well, I mean, what does that mean? The Guyver Two is a lost film. No, because maybe I think it they... is though. Maybe because. Like, how do you well, see it now? It is a lot. True. Story. It's yeah. really expensive on DVD. You can get it on VHS. <laughs> There's lots of cheap, like, Australian bootlegs or Korean bootlegs, but it is kind of hard to find. They even, But they took it off of YouTube, so mm. I'm like, dude, does somebody have the rights to this? Is somebody getting some cooking here? Shout I did. I do know that a German company put out the first Giver on Blu-ray, um, but I don't know if that means anything. All right. All right. Well, then it is time for wrap ups. And the first person going for wrap ups is Colin. Oh, well, uh, Guyver, dark hero. So, okay. Uh, I don't recall, uh, you know, like I said earlier, being fantastic. I thought it was going to be like, I don't like this movie. No, don't no. want right. to talk about it anymore. I think I maybe liked it more than I liked the first one. But that's not saying that I necessarily liked it because here's my experience with it was it comes out of the gate and you're like, okay, it's amateur hour in terms of uh, acting, writing, score, editing. So it's got all that against it. But I'm like, okay, you know, maybe when we get to the actual Guyver fighting, like this thing's going to pay off. And the first time that it did, 
it actually did pay off in a way that I was like, well, you know what? Maybe this isn't going to be so bad. This is like actually kind of cool. I dig the monster design. I think the sculpting, you know, and the detail on these creatures is something. And the Kung Fu, the stunts was, was pretty cool. And then I think it was about an hour before <laughs> something happened again. Did we mention that this movie is two hours <laughs> and, and eight minutes long? <clears throat> and it takes place almost entirely in a cave. <laughs> So somewhere something's got to give. So it this movie needs to be tightened up. It is like I mean, unless this is like a director's cut or something that we watched. No, I don't know. The, this is our, this is it. They're like we're coming out. We're going two yeah, hours, like, eight minutes. When that. you go direct to video, you get what you get. Yeah, we have our opportunity to make a Guyver movie, and we're gonna make like the epic yeah. two hours set in a cave Guyver movie. Um, yeah. So I guess my interest began to wane. You know, in between there, because then, you know, you've got, you know, these, uh, I don't know, the characters. Everybody in this movie is like a non-professional, like, you know, and so it was kind of it wasn't funny enough. Like they weren't so bad that it was amusing. It was just kind of like trite and kind of tedious and you're waiting. And then the second big fight comes along and it, that to me was disappointing because it was all outdoors and then it broke the spell. It was like, okay, <laughs> this is, you know, it is power Rangers at this point or it's Godzilla. And then There's nothing wrong with those. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, well, I mean, I, I think it, you know, as I, just from my own perspective, and this is a, it, again, it's a matter of taste because like I said, listener, I realize that there are, a lot of fans of Power Rangers and uh, those Godzilla films. And if that's the case, then you are the audience for this movie. <laughs> and I think that you'll probably enjoy it. Uh, a little bit of that stuff kind of goes a long way with me. And, you know, like I explained before, I think with with monsters and stuff, I, I need to see less of them in order to uh, to to imagine the rest somehow. And it makes mm. them the, this mythic thing. But when you see two guys wrestling in these rubber suits in a creek bed, it's like, oh, <laughs> just two guys in rubber suits wrestling in a creek <laughs> bed. <clears throat> it's been a sad day on set. Yeah. Yeah. And so it just kind of, and then by the time the final that fight scene. <laughs> that would have been exciting. If any of you motherfuckers made movies, that would have been the most, the, the oh, I'm most sure. fun but day making I a think, movie you'd ever <laughs> And I think that when they were making this, they totally shared that sentiment because they refused to cut any of it out. That's they right. were like, we're going to show <laughs> yeah. every goddamn thing that we shot. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm like. I am feeling like 50-50 on this because I don't think it's necessarily bad. And I think there's, I, like I said, I did like it more than the first one. But, man, by the end of it, it felt like two hours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that it's last epic. fight scene didn't do anything for me because yep. it just went on for like 10 fucking minutes. And I was like, you guys got to you gotta cut this out. So it's like there's, there's like 30, 40 minutes of a good movie in here stretched out to two hours. So yeah, I guess I am saying like, <sighs> oh. Yeah, mm. I think if you're listening, that you you know if you like this kind of thing mm. or not, and if you do, I think you'll be satisfied. I wasn't. <laughs> so what are you what are you saying, Colin? <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you saying? <laughs> shorter this movie, shorter. Gone through the editing room. I would like. There you go. Oh. All right. I honestly, Colin and I are completely in sync on this one because he said everything that I was thinking. Um, I, I'd have to agree. If you cut pretty much every scene in half, it would have been better for me. Everything was drug out in this movie, every single scene. And again, the the final battle, I just thought it was boring. It did nothing for me. I wanted. I like. I like. Did you see that part where they kicked their like they kicked their shit? <laughs> I did. I did. I know exactly what you're talking awesome. about. That was good. It was awesome, dude. I liked I've it. Mimicked that ever since I was a child. <laughs> I'm not saying there weren't seconds of yeah, that was good. I, seconds of yeah, awesomeness. Yeah, there was seconds of awesomeness. I and I thought the guy Zonoid was cool, but it just it didn't. <laughs> It just didn't do it for me. I, I again, same as Colin. I liked it better than the first one. I did, and <laughs> I wanted 
so badly to like it because it, it started off for me. I was like, okay, this movie's gonna be fun, and then I see the first monster. I'm like, okay, it's a legit monster. Like this is pretty good. And then somewhere they just started losing me, and they never really got me back. It it just didn't flow with me. I didn't hate it, but it just didn't work. It's I don't know. It's exactly what Colin said. Exactly. Yeah. No. Did it. <laughs> I, I, I can't. He said everything I wanted to say. <laughs> so nothing's clear. Um, uh, I'll tell you what this movie has going for it. Um, the creature design I like. Um, I think it's, uh, and I'm going to say that I, I, it's hard to say whether I like this one more than the first one. Um, cause I like the first one. The first one's the, well, that's the one I grew up on. Um, this is the first time I've seen this one. Um, it does kind of, devolve into and maybe devolves not the right word because I like the Power Rangers um, but it does go into Power Ranger fighting especially when we get into the broad daylight stuff mm-hmm. um, creature design's good it's got David Hayter in it doing the best acting of his life as far as I'm concerned <laughs> that, <laughs> it's like his life's on the line that, it really is God damn it your family's over here with a gun to their head <laughs> like that's a plus <laughs> like in the ridiculous arena like that is like it's making the meter go up up for me. I like that. Um, I like the hour and a half version of this movie. Yes. Right. That yes. is, that is yes. the version yeah, I, I recommend this. of this. The two hour and eight two hour and eight minute version I can't recommend because there's there's a lot of good parts, you just gotta cut them down. Like uh Zoonoid Giver, like that's great. Like that's where this movie was supposed to go, and I love that it yes. went there. Um, but just cut everything down to an hour and a half. And it would be great. So yes. I recommend the hour and a half version, not the two hour and eight minute version. Um, I give it uh, 2.5 David Hater no faces out of five <laughs> David Hater no faces. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, you, uh, <laughs> you. Let me explain <laughs> movie oh, magic. We only have, <laughs> we have five minutes. Yeah, yeah. No, we got plenty of time. Uh, you got to learn now. <laughs> I mean, okay, there's something that happens every once in a while that I truly like, and I guess it's pure fan service, I suppose. But um, these are movies that I think, yeah, they're not made by filmmakers. <laughs> they're made by by costume makers, and they're made by stuntmen, and they're made by, and that's like, in a weird way, I think that's almost more passionate than like real filmmakers in a weird way. Because it's like, these are guys that like, they have to sit around and wait for someone to say, hey, I've got a movie for a monster. You know, that would suck, right? If you want to make monsters and do stunts, and it, it, was, it, it sucks to have to wait for someone to come up with something for you instead of, like, you be proactive and be like, well, fuck it. No, I like... I like some Japanese anime and I like some monsters. And I like, let's fucking put it together. Well, I'll fuck, I'll direct it. Fuck it. What's, I've seen people direct before. What the fuck? Ain't no big deal. You know? <laughs> and I think there's a I just lot saw of this happen. It was harbingered down. Oh, Alec damn. Gillis. Yeah. And they, he wanted to make a monster movie. So they went to Kickstarter so they could make a monster movie. Got Lance Henriksen in it. It's basically the thing on a, on a, on a ship. On a ship. Did, you, did it work? No. No. <laughs> Well, let me tell you where it did work, man. They had, they had some monsters. Let me tell you where it did work. Uh, if you watch Street Fighter Assassin's Fist, Street Fighter is like directed and produced by a stunt man that was like in one of the Bourne movies. <laughs> but this fucking dude loves Street Fighter. He's like, there's no good adaptation of Street Fighter. So this fucking dude put his money where his mouth is, went to Capcom, got the rights, and like... It's, dude, it's one of the fucking most brilliant kind of like fan films, I guess. But it's like it's the dude. It's like the I mean, it's the closest thing you're ever going to get to a Street Fighter movie. That it looks like the game, feels like the game. So I just like that idea that somehow, like somehow, like this, like Hollywood doesn't want to make things that are close to the things you love. Period. <laughs> they just don't. They want to make things that everyone likes. You know, they're like, well, I mean, that's the problem with the first movie. They're like, this Guyver thing, you know, what? Ah, let's put some jokes in it. Let's, you know, let's, let's do things for the kid. Well, you know, like, it's a little gay. It. Let's change that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's going to be like what? Violence? Uh, we need to make money. Let's. We, Ninja Turtles just came out. You know. <laughs> 
So I like it how, I don't know, I just like that type of filmmaking when people say, you know what, like, fuck where the audience is. I know where the audience is. You know, it might be the, the smallest <laughs> slip, but I mean, fuck, I was, dude, I was ecstatic when I saw this on the shelf. Like, because, I mean, I saw the Guyver movie, I saw the cartoons, and that's it. I was like, well, that's it. And like, unless I order, like, I even read up to the point of the comics that America distributed, you know, we stopped at a certain point, you know, it's like, well, fuck, that's you know, this is one of my favorite sci-fi stories, and it stops at a certain point, and there's years of story I have no idea about, you know, it's one of those things that's always intrigued me, like, I guess I could order the Japanese novels and just look at the pictures and be like, oh, wow (laughs) but just the fact that I saw this on the show, I was like holy fuck, a Guyver sequel you know who to thought it, you know? Like, I can't believe it. I thought that when there was a return to Salem's Lot. Oh, shit. Look how that turned out. Yes. Yes. Well, I like, I mean, I like Guyver, too, just because it does have, to me, at least, it has the martial arts that the first one is kind of lacking. The first one maybe has more, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what the first one has. Space more, armor. More talking monsters. Mark Hamill's mustache. Like the first one, I think, like, all the monsters talked. In this one, some of them are pretty mute for, they like, don't, 10 minutes. Yeah, they don't really talk. They don't talk Because much. they're not, like, characters. No, they're not. They're, they were more, more characters in the first one than they are in this one. They were more comical in the first one, which I liked about the second one, that they weren't as comedic. Yeah. I liked that. But they should have talked. They should have, because, I mean, talked. like... Eh. Every Guyver cartoon is just like, I mean, a, a cartoon for a, for Japan needs to st- stay as still as possible. So <laughs> it's like, who are you? I'm the more. My powers are, you know, you, they tell you who they are and like what they do. Like, it's basically yep. describing the toy. Um, so it's one of those things where it's like, I see this movie for all the flaws it has. Um, so, I mean, David Hayter's acting is so fucking hysterical. <laughs> oh, God. You will never even imagine just the type of, like, revving up for his <laughs> delivery. Yeah. You know, um, we didn't mention, though, like, that awesome scene where, well, it, will le- it should get you if you were a kid, I guess, maybe, uh, where... He has to run and jump off the cliff and call for Guyver. <laughs> to, and he goes up to the uh, top of the cliff and like it's a beautiful scenic shot where he's awesome. above the clouds and uh, wherever mountain this is, and he's like, Corey, 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 Sean. <laughs> but then he takes a running start and he makes sure to make like. <laughs> He has to make like a, right. I'm gonna do this face. Like he's like, oh there's his acting. He just hangs on it, just like. <laughs> Starts running in slow motion, jumps off, then Guyver. Guyver! <laughs> and that's, I oh, think that's, that's so, cool editing. So when you could have, like, the <laughs> so guy, good. the guy, like, already, like, crouching beneath the camera, then have him just rise up. That way you can match the special effects with the guy dropping, then him rise. That's, dude, that's, <laughs> you know? I, that's classic filmmaking. That's, like, yeah. what intrigues me about filmmaking. That sort of shit that without all these computers, you could be like, how's this guy going to jump off a mountain and fucking turn it to the Guyver <laughs> land? And then the camera's going to pan and he's already going to be like down the road with like a trail of smoke like he's running really fast, you know? Have like two Guyver suits, one guy to pop up in front of the camera and leave, then the other guy to start running. That is fucking brilliant. Like, that's classic. Uh, like, if we were going to do that scene right now, that's how it would be done. Yeah. Yeah. It's just genius. Um, <laughs> and fun, I guess. And I've always, I just, I don't know, I've always liked the Guyver story. Uh, it's just something interesting to me. Um, yeah, it's represented way better in the cartoons and the comics. Uh, but, you know, fuck it. If, you know, when you're a kid and you want to see something brought to life, you know, you'll take it anyway. I mean, <laughs> like Masters of the Universe, fucking... <laughs> You know, yeah, because I mean, they're only gonna give it to you once or twice. So you know, you're you gonna get it once. It. Like, dude, they'll never make. I mean, it's like Japan hasn't even made a fucking Guyver movie. It's like, why? It's like one of the most popular guys. They have the rights a- now, though. That's why we don't have a Guyver three. They went back to the oh, Japan. Shit. Oh. I was a big fan of GI Joe growing up. Watched the show all the time. <laughs> yeah. I've got a movie. How do you Should feel? I be loving it? You have two. Well, well, you got take three. It because, again. What about the original movie with Cobra Law and Serpentor? Yeah. That's a fucking movie. Yes, I have Cobra. that movie. Cobra. La, 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 I have that movie. <laughs> yes. So you recommend it? Yeah, I recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Movie. All right, so that's Guyver 2 on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And so that means that next week, buckle up, we're going to be watching Sean's pick. Sean, what are we watching next week? The summer of sequels rolls on. 
Ghoulies 2. Oh. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was not the reaction I wanted. Like, Yay! Huh, all, right. all right. So all next right. week, Ghoulies 2, right here. And until then, the basement is going dark.